Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Stefan, and today we're gonna to talk about one of the easiest and simplest things you can do to radically improve your health today. And that's known as grounding, also known as earthing. Now, I feel I'm in a unique position to talk about the benefits of earthing and grounding because I'm a geophysicist and I've also been writing and researching and experimenting in the health and wellness sphere for more than 10 years now. So those two help me to overlap and see how the geophysics of the earth and how the actual electrical processes that happen here on our planet influence our bioelectrical system and therefore influence our health from the foundation up. Now, this video will talk about like what is earthing in the first place, the bioelectrical effects of earthing. We'll talk about uh, the health benefits of earthing, which there's a ton, the geophysics of earthing, and then also how you can incorporate earthing into your lifestyle and a few different ways you can do that. So to get started, what is earthing? Well, it's really simple. I'm out here on location for this video because I felt that was important. I wanted to be grounded while doing this video. And I'll be using the words grounding and earthing interchangeably, okay? Because they're one of the same thing. This right here, that's earthing. Me putting my bare foot on the ground is earthing. Now, the reason that is, is that the earth is electrically conductive. There are free electrons that travel through the earth. And the human body is also electrically conductive. We have 1300 nerve endings per square inch on the sole of our feet and our hands are also incredibly dense in nerve endings and a couple other parts of our body so when you put an electrically conductive uh, thing into contact with something else that's electrically conductive you get a flow of electrons between them so right now the earth because it has free electrons it's now moving up through my foot through my leg and then of course through my entire body and you can also do earthing, just like sitting here in Lotus, for example. But earthing at a very, very, very simple level is basically just putting yourself into electrical contact with the ground, with the earth, so you can equalize your electric charge. Because your heart generates an electromagnetic field. Your brain has an electromagnetic field. Your nervous system is all basically charges that move up and down through your body. As you eat and as you move around and as you do various things you build up electric charge in your body you can measure this with the voltimeter and the bioelectrical system of the body works best when you're neutral and stable to the ground surface when you have uh, odd and imbalanced electrical charges in your body that influences a whole bunch of things which we'll get into so earthing at its just base level is basically getting in contact with the electrical potential of the earth and then equalizing your charge to it. Now, that leads into what is bioelectricity and how earthing kind of interacts with bioelectricity. Let me go into that a little bit more. The human body is bioelectrical. So what we're realizing more and more now is that bioelectricity sits at the base of all human biology and physiology and psychology and everything. And it's our bioelectrical system that determines a lot of things in regards to our health and wellness. It term, determines our cardiac health. It determines uh, how much inflammation there is in the body. It determines gene expression, how your DNA actually expresses what genes turn on and what genes turn off, which of course affects like, a, like not, I was gonna say a million, more like a billion things in the body or more. And it also affects just, it can affect your mood, your mental health, uh, your bioelectricity is really everything. So let me give you a really good example of this. There's a study of electrobiology known as morphogenetics. And morphogenetics is basically talking about your morphogenetic field, how your body expresses itself in space-time. And they did this really interesting study where they took a tadpole embryo. And the tadpole, of course, is growing and they see the little brain there. And so they took two probes and they measured the electrical voltage of that tadpole across the brain, and they got a certain value. Let's call it seven, right? So they measured electrical voltage uh, gradient of like seven across that brain tissue. Then they took that same uh, gradient and applied it to a different part of the tadpole. So instead of just re uh, recording it, this time they applied it to the tadpole's tail. 
And this is while the tadpole is still growing, so it uh, has a whole bunch of undifferentiated stem cells and things of that nature. And basically what they found was that as they applied that voltage gradient to the tadpole's tail, it started to grow brain tissue there. The, the tail, the cells of the tail changed their expression fundamentally in a very large way to go from just being muscle and connective tissue and sinew and maybe a little bit of bone, and they became heart, uh, brain tissue. And then what they did is before they applied that voltage gradient, they measured the voltage gradient of the tail, then they applied the voltage gradient at the tail again, and that brain tissue which was forming in the tail became a tail again. So this, this, this experiment they did was with a tadpole, a fairly not as a complex of a life form as us, but what it shows is that these voltage gradients that run through our body uh, and these uh, currents, these electrical currents and the magnetic fields that our heart and our brain produce are super, super, super fundamental to our biology and to our physiology. So when you are grounding, you are fundamentally changing. When you are grounding, you are fundamentally changing your uh, human bioelectricity. And you're doing it in a way that is actually how we evolved. We evolved in contact with the earth for millions and millions and millions of years. It's, it's very abnormal now, actually, that we have been wearing shoes, insulating rubber on the bottom, right? I mean, this is a leather, leather top, but you don't have any electrical flow, almost no electrical flow from the earth to the, uh, to me, my foot inside the shoe with this rubber in between. So this recent invention has actually completely changed our bioelectrical system and how it expresses itself. And then you have things like we're living in high-rise buildings which are more disconnected from the earth and then often they're made of things like wood or there's vinyl flooring, there's a lot of plastic. Our modern life now has more of an insulating layer in between us and the earth and that changes human electrophysiology at a fundamental level. And researchers who've looked into the health effects of earthing have actually shown and have the general opinion that the human body is fundamentally different when it's earthed than when it's not earthed, when it's grounded and when it's not grounded. So let's talk about that now. We'll talk about the health benefits of earthing, and they're very, very numerous. And kind of at the base layer, we'll start, they, they, they interlink a lot. So I, I'm gonna start kind of the base and then work my way out. At the base layer, what you're doing is you're neutralizing electric charges in your body to the stable, relatively stable electric field potential of the earth. And then in addition to that, since you're now more stable with the earth, you also assist the flow of energy through your body because electrical charges have this um, polarity effect. So if you are relatively neutral to the earth, energy can flow through your body easier. And you can think about this in terms of like the chakra system and the meridian system, or you can just think of it in terms of just how your nervous system works, right? Do you, uh, are you able to stick your hand out when you want or is it shaky the whole time, right? Um, so grounding stabilizes your nervous system. It reduces unwanted electrical charges in your body. It brings in a flow of free electrons that neutralize free radicals. And by doing this, it reduces inflammation in the body. So overall, it just has this really kind of stabilizing influence on the nervous system. And the, the main way that expresses itself is that it increases parasympathetic activity. You have your autonomic nervous system, which is your largely unconscious nervous system that regulates your heart rate and your breathing and things like respiration. And your autonomic nervous system has a sympathetic state and a parasympathetic state. Your sympathetic state is the one that activates when you're stressed. It's your fight or flight response. So you see something that's stressful and adrenaline kicks up, cortisol kicks up. Most people live in a sympathetic dominant uh, lifestyle, you could say. Then there's your parasympathetic state, and your parasympathetic state is your rest and digest, or your feed and breed state. So you're more relaxed, 
cortisol is going down, muscle activity uh, is a little bit more, like your autonomic nervous system muscle activity is more just uh, harmonious and coherent. The waves of muscle activity of your gut are very much just rhythmic, um, things of that nature. So grounding by connecting to the earth, you're increasing your parasympathetic nervous system activity, something most people are heavily deficient in nowadays. So those are the nervous system benefits. When you go from the nervous system benefits, we'll now look at the cardiac benefits because the nervous system influences the heart greatly and vice versa. So one of the things that earthing does is it reduces your uh, chance of having arrhythmias, which is like uh, skipped heartbeats and just weak heartbeats and just out of order uh, heartbeats, things that aren't rhythmic, they're not in time. So it reduces your chance of that because you have less random electrical voltages in your body, everything's more stable. It also improves your heart rate variability. Now heart rate variability is really interesting. It's one of the best measures of sudden mortality and also one of the best measures of stress. And it's really simple. When you breathe and just throughout your day to day, your heart rate changes. It goes from let's say 60 beats per minute to like 80, back to 60. And this is a very normal cycle. It's mostly governed by your breathing. When you breathe in, heart rate increases. When you breathe out, it slows down a bit. So your heart rate variability will go like this if it's very healthy. It'll go up and down, up and down, up and down in a very continuous sinusoidal manner, okay? Now, if you don't have a healthy cardiac system, your heart rate variability condenses, it reduces. You don't have as great of a variability. So what they've shown with grounding is that it actually improves your heart rate variability. It takes you um, from, let's say, just having a slightly variable heartbeat to one that's greater, one that can uh, have these bigger waves. And that's related to a whole bunch of things. But to keep it simple, grounding improves heart rate variability which is very, very important for your cardiac health. Grounding also improves something, this is one of the biggest things, grounding improves something known as your zeta potential. Now, blood cells have a surface negative charge on them to stop themselves from clumping together and sticking together because you have these small capillaries in the body, small veins, and you don't want blood cells to be clumped together or not able to push through those very, very small blood vessels. So they have what's known as a zeta potential. They have this negative charge. And when you're in contact with the earth, this is, since they're electrons, right? Electrons have a negative charge. You're exposing yourself to a more negative charge than what your body has at that moment. So grounding improves the zeta potential of red blood cells. And that stops red blood cells from clumping together. And you can take uh, blood tissue or uh, blood samples and put them under, under a microscope and look at how they clump from before and after grounding. They've done that. It's really clear. So that improves zeta potential, which it takes a lot of stress off of your heart. It helps uh, blood to circulate better. It reduces blood viscosity, which is one of those things that most people with heart disease have really poor blood viscosity because they're super ungrounded. So it improves zeta potential. Grounding also like improves your cholesterol parameters and lowers triglycerides and lower LDL cholesterol. And the reason why it lowers LDL cholesterol is because it reduces inflammation in the body, which we'll get to in a little bit. That's actually like one of the biggest things that grounding does. Uh, but overall, grounding has a very beneficial effect on the cardiac system and for stabilizing the beneficial rhythms of your heart to how they like to uh, basically flow. In addition to that, grounding also benefits your gut health. And one of the main reasons why is you have what's known as gut motility. This is the transit of food through your stomach and your intestines. And you digest food better and you have less gut health issues when your gut motility is normal. And gut motility is determined by the smooth muscle activity of your gut. So the smooth muscles surround uh, the intestines and they're part of the autonomic nervous system, so they're not regulated consciously, and they contract and uh, pulse through peristaltic waves, and that moves food through your digestive system. So when you're grounded and you have a stable electrical potential, your smooth muscle activity normalizes and becomes more regular. It's not 
all blocked up for two hours and then pushing all your food through really quickly. It's giving food even amounts of time through every single part of the stomach and small intestine and large intestine because each part of the gut absorbs different nutrients and performs different functions. So they're all very important. And food needs to transit through them smoothly for your gut to be healthy. So grounding benefits gut health, it can reduce constipation, it can reduce diarrhea, it can improve things like IBS, which is a gut health condition a lot of people have, that's irritable bowel syndrome. And it can also improve gut health because it reduces inflammation. And that helps with things like leaky gut, that helps with things like food intolerances, and the list goes on. Inflammation is like the root cause of like 80 plus diseases, chronic and otherwise. So. The fact that it reduces inflammation is super huge. We'll get to that now. Grounding is one of the best things you can do to reduce inflammation in your body. Now, inflammation is caused by uh, a variety of factors, one of the main ones being free radicals. And free radicals are basically uh, positive ions that can react with things, and then that can break uh, molecular structures and break things apart. And free, uh, free radicals aren't necessarily bad, but when they're left unchecked and they just kind of go out of control, then they are. Because you can use, the body uses free radicals to uh, trigger healing when something needs to be broken down and healed. That's, in, the inflammation process isn't a bad thing when it's done to the right degree. But if it's left unchecked, then everything goes haywire and now you have a, a chronic inflammation in the body and now you're starting to disrupt and destroy healthy tissues and put undue stress on the body. So by stabilizing your body to the electrical potential of the earth, the relatively stable electrical potential of the earth, you greatly reduce inflammation. And that greatly reduces pain. When you uh, are earthing often, you have a lot less pain. If you have, um, let's say, chronic pain in your back, or you have arthritis, rheumatoid, or otherwise, or stomach pain, or there's a whole bunch of different types of pains, we all know them, grounding reduces that pain because it reduces free radicals and it reduces inflammation. Now, grounding can also reduce pain that's induced, like delayed onset muscle soreness or from a hard workout. So if you are exercising a lot or you did a really uh, big workout, things of that nature, grounding will reduce that uh, pain because it reduces muscle protein breakdown. There's just less nitrogen waste that's created, less muscle and less proteins broken down when you do something grounded versus when you don't do it grounded. And that all again relates to that foundational bioelectrical system and how it functions. It also improves things like your flexibility. So by improving your um, electrical charges in your body, uh, that helps your muscles to relax better. And it does a whole bunch of things. It improves your glaucoma. If you have glaucoma, uh, it improves renal function. Grounding is one of those things that touches your bioelectrical uh, physiology at its very, very base. It's like a master, master switch for your health and wellness. So if you have any sort of health problem and you're not grounding, then you should be grounding every single day because that's super important. That will undoubtedly help you with whatever issue you have. And it's not like you can prescribe grounding like, okay, I have this specific problem. I'm gonna go out and I know grounding will fix it. But grounding will fix and help you heal whatever health issues you have. So you can't necessarily direct it. It will just do what it needs to do. And we evolved to be in contact with the earth. So your body knows what it needs and knows how to equalize its charges, just trust the whole process and just spend sufficient time out here. So I'll quickly go into uh, kind of like how these free electrons are created. This is the geophysics of grounding. The earth is a giant battery. It's fed by constant solar radiation and also by radioactive decay in the core and also the mantle and the crust. This just puts energy into the earth and the earth overall has a uh, electric charge when the earth's surface has an electric charge if you compare it to other parts of the earth like the ionosphere. Uh, if you go up into the atmosphere 40 kilometers, 50 kilometers, 100 kilometers, you have an atmospheric layer known as the ionosphere. And the ionosphere is basically where 
solar radiation, UV radiation has taken gas molecules and split their bonds and now you have these positive ions floating around. You have some electrons too, but overall the ionosphere has a charge of like 250,000 to 500,000 volts. So you have this positive charge up here and then you have this negative charge down here because every positive requires a negative to be balanced. And as you go up the atmosphere, you have a voltage gradient that occurs. So if you're standing at the top of your head, you have about 350 to 400 volts. But because air is a poor conductor, you don't get zapped. And that's called the umbrella effect. Now, when you have a storm system, when uh, when water vapor moves through the air and there's a little bit of friction, you can start to develop charges in the atmosphere and that can develop a storm system. And with a storm system, positive charge will develop underneath the storm and at the bottom of the rain cloud you'll have, or storm cloud, you'll have a negative charge and at the top you'll have a positive charge and then you have the ionosphere again positive up there. And when that storm cloud discharges via lightning, that shoots a whole bunch of free electrons into the earth. So the electrical potential of the Earth that happens to go into the atmosphere is fed back into the Earth via lightning strikes, of which there's 50 to like 150 every single second. So they're po constantly popping off, and these create magnetotelluric currents that travel through the Earth. And overall, there's a whole soup and sea of free electrons that aren't bound to any single molecule. They're able to move and flow to where, uh, where they're attracted to. So being electrically conductive, when you put yourself into contact with the ground, those free electrons flow through your body. And that's, in general, the geophysics of earthing. Now, here's how you can actually practice earthing. Here's, here's what you can do to incorporate earthing into your life to enjoy all those health and wellness benefits of which I've covered some of. There's much more on my earthing article. You can check out the video description to read that. But the way you can earth, the simplest way you can earth is just to simply walk around barefoot. Just Go to the park and put your foot on the ground. Go barefoot for 20 minutes at the park, run around or do some yoga or just stand there and meditate for a little bit or just, you can also sit down like as I am right now, I'm grounded right now because I've been sitting on the ground now for 15, 20 minutes. Electrons flow through your feet really easily and your hands because there's a lot of nerve endings here, but they'll also work up through your base of your spine and start to go like this and go through your entire body. And if you're grounding in this manner, if you're out at a park or you're uh, at the beach, for example, or maybe it's not a, a, a grass field, but you're in contact with the earth, then you can expect it to take 15, 20, 30 minutes to get fully grounded in that manner. The other way you can get grounded that's really, really, really good is to go for a swim, especially in conductive uh, bodies of water. That would be like the ocean where there's a lot of dissolved salts because the more ions in solution, the more electrons can flow between them and the more conductive the water is. So water, like seawater, is really, really conductive. And what's great about swimming is that you'll be in the water typically for a while and your entire body is immersed. So you have free electrons from every single part going in and neutralizing your bioelectricity simultaneously. Whereas if you're grounding like this, it kind of moves up through your nervous system like that and it takes some time. Swimming is really rapid. Taking a shower will also help ground you. Uh, though fresh water like tap water is not going to be super, super conductive as compared to seawater, but it still definitely grounds you. It helps to sweep some of this electrical charge out of your body. So if you're feeling super ungrounded, and I think we all kind of understand what that means individually, if you're feeling super ungrounded, you can go outside, go for a walk barefoot, you can go to the beach, lay down, go for a swim, you can take a shower if you're at home. You can even just touch a conductive object. Uh, again, this is just a connection between conductive objects. We're just facilitating a transfer of charge. So if you have a good understanding of this and you see a conductive object, let's say some metal railing outside uh, the grocery store, you can just put your hand on that and some of your charge will flow through you. And depending on how long you hold on to that metal railing and how well uh, grounded and uncharged it is, the faster it will occur. So there's a whole bunch of ways to get grounded. You can also get grounded while you sleep with something like an earthy mat or a blanket. Uh, they also have like pillowcases or patches for localized grounding relief. If you use any of those products like an earthing blanket or a mat, I recommend that you don't plug it into the ground system of your house because the ground system of your house is 
surrounded by all the power wires and also it's right there with your Wi-Fi everything so it's picking up a lot of this electromagnetic junk that's already in your house. I recommend you take a grounding rod and actually put it outside in your lawn far away from any power lines or underground lines. Really make sure it's in some nice isolated virgin ground. Drive it in, connect a shielded wire to your blanket to that rod and just check it every once in a while to make sure it doesn't get nibbled or something. But that's the best way you can get grounded for sleeping and grounded while sleeping is one of the best things you can do. That's your natural like time of the day that your body regenerates so to put yourself into a grounded state for like five six eight hours more or more perhaps every single day is super transformative for your health if you have any sort of long-term chronic problems and even if you're already healthy you'll definitely notice good benefits from it so uh, one tip for how you can improve your grounding is you can use something like peppermint oil I've noticed that peppermint oil activates bioelectricity. So if you want to improve the whole effect, you can simply just put some on the bottom of your foot like that. And then as you're walking around the park or doing whatever, you'll notice that the whole um, grounding effect is much faster. You can also put this along your spine so the, the bioelectricity moves up easier and you can put it, let's say, on your limbs. Um, but typically, if I'm using peppermint oil to help facilitate the flow of bioelectrical energy, I'm putting it on my spine, and I'm also putting some here, and I'm putting a little bit there, and a little bit on the back of my head. So that's grounding. I hope you enjoyed this video. I have a whole article on this where I go more in depth, so you can check that out in the video description. And you can also check out uh, a complete earthing starter kit from Amazon in the video description that has a blanket and a mat and a pillowcase and patches and that's really good if you're more limited in your ability to go outside often I highly recommend that uh, because you shouldn't let lifestyle limitations stop you from grounding it's what we evolved to do um, it fundamentally changes your physiology and your gene expression and your bioelectricity it's one of the best things you can do for your health so if you don't have the ability to run around and do yoga at the park every day kind of like i do then that earthing starting pack is really really key because you'll be grounding while you sleep perhaps you'll use the mat and you'll be grounded while you're at the computer uh, you can use uh, the, the blanket while you're watching tv you can be grounded really really often if you're a more of a home buddy and that's really really important for your health especially if you have chronic diseases grounding itself is free uh, you can it's one of the best health and wellness things you can do and it's totally free because it's just basically uh, utilizing an understanding of our physiology so i hope you found this video on grounding useful and there's a whole bunch of resources in the video description please check those out if you like the video give it a thumbs up that helps me out and for more content like this just please subscribe you'll see those as they come out i'm making a whole bunch of videos on human bioelectricity and herbalism and energy and geophysics and all the things so if you like this type of stuff where science meets spirituality please give it a like give it a subscribe and i'll see you all in the next video ciao